GTA Vice City is a fantastic game, but you're not going to believe how much content Rockstar Games cut from the final version that we actually got to play. Today, with the use of mods, we will one by one be adding each feature back to the game to finish with the closest version we can to the original beta version. Firstly, there's a ton of really great weapons removed from the game. One of the weapons can actually be seen here in the opening cutscene, which is an MP5K which while being visible here is actually never available to find within the world. I've added this one back with mods seen here, but I've also added back a ton of other weapons as well. All of these weapons were also included in the beta version, like the nail gun. There's a taser. An AK-47. There's an AUG, or the AUG, depending on how you pronounce it, which is one of the coolest weapons in my opinion. There's also some silenced weapons, like this suppressed pistol and this Uzi right here. But my favourite of them all has to go to the Desert Eagle. This is again seen in the cutscene of the shootist where we meet Phil Cassidy, but then was removed from the game. I don't know why, but using the Desert Eagle or the Org are probably the coolest two out of all of them. There's also this grenade launcher, which was allegedly supposed to be in the final game, but for some reason it doesn't really work very well, so whether or not it worked this badly when the game was actually in beta or not, and that's why they cut it, but still, it would have been a cool weapon if they had have managed to add it into the game. Here's something good that they removed from the game now, because the beta version of Tommy originally looked completely different. And first of all, one of the noticeable differences you might actually spot is the fact that his face looks really unusual here. I mean, come on, he looks like a bit of like a rat here or something. For the sake of today's video, we'll be playing as this version of Tommy for the remainder of today's video. But something else you want to notice is the fact that this version of Tommy also has a darker shirt. This can also be seen throughout various promotional material before the game came out, as you can see on your screen right now. It would appear that quite a lot of the map of Vice City was changed just before release, because as you can see here at the Sunshine Autos vehicle dealership, there's a map here that reveals parts of the map have changed quite drastically. The top of the map is thinner than in the final version of the game. The airport runway and the military base has completely shifted. The bridge that connects the middle of the islands together has a curve in it, and the Hyman Memorial Stadium, one of the coolest locations in the game, initially didn't even exist in the first place. But there's also some other locations that have gone completely unconfirmed, and one of these locations is confirmed by Avery Carrington himself throughout the game. And one of these places that was cut from the final game is called Shady Acres, and what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly listen to Avery Carrington's radio interview or advert shall we say where he mentions this place and has some very interesting things to say about it that give us some ideas of what it would have looked like. I'm Avery Carrington. Shady Acres is an incredible upscale state-of-the-art top-notch condominium development. Condo. A short drive out of town on some pristine wetlands away from the noise and uninvited diversity of the city. Shady Acres. And when you buy So as we know in Vice City Avery Carrington is a property developer and the area that he's describing here is one that we're not familiar with throughout the entire game meaning it must have been a location that was cut from the game sometime during development. He says that it's a wetlands that's far away from the city and the bustling noise. It sounds like this would have been a smaller island somewhere on the map that had lots of large condos, mansions and more countryside kind of things. Sort of the sort of place you would find some of the residents that are a lot richer to reside outside of the city that still need to commute somewhere within. But this isn't the coolest location that Rockstar Games decided to cut from Vice City. And this next location again would have been introduced by Avery Carrington and as you can see here from this cut mission dialogue right here he would have sent Tommy to go and pick up a re representative of his from an area called the Gator Keys which as we know now is Rockstar's recreation of the Everglades in real life and it's a really huge shame that this was removed from the game and we don't know at what point in development it was removed from the game. Now there are some mods that actually add this area back but it's nothing like what it would have been like in the final game where 
where it's more swamp lands and boggy marshes and instead the modification only adds some houses and mansions. Have you ever wondered to yourself why the opening cutscene where Ken Rosenberg drops Tommy off to the lawyer's office seems so strange and unusual? Well it turns out that Rockstar Games removed a lot of that opening cutscene from the final game which with the thanks of mods and some users who have managed to bring it back we can now watch what this cutscene would have looked like but a lot of the audio has been cut. I poked my head out of the gutter for one freaking second and fate shovels shit in my face. Go get some sleep. I'll drop by your office tomorrow and we can start sorting this mess out. You may now connect the dots and realise why this scene seemed like it was so choppy and didn't really make sense. There's also that mission for Diaz called Supply and Demand where Tommy and Lance have to get into the speedboat and go and collect some drugs for him. And when you arrive in the speedboat, the screen fades to black and then instantly you are being chased by enemies shooting at you while you have to then shoot back at them with an assault rifle while Lance gets the boat back to Diaz's mansion. But what you didn't know is that Rockstar Games cut out a really important cutscene that basically breaks this up nicely and explains why these guys are chasing after you. That's the last of them. I'm gonna start her up. I think we got some new friends. <clears throat> I don't really know why Rockstar cut this out of the game, I guess maybe they thought it was irrelevant, but I think this is a lot better than having literally nothing, and let me know if you agree with me down below. There was also a horse betting shop called the Inside Track that you may be familiar with from GTA San Andreas, but thanks to this Vice City beta mod we can add it back to Vice City where it was initially planned to be in the game before it was in San Andreas. And a fun fact for you guys here is the textures used in San Andreas for this betting shop are actually the same textures as the one from Vice City. That whole feature that we get in GTA San Andreas is all just a ported feature that was initially planned for Vice City. What you'll notice from this pre-release screenshot right here is that not only Tommy Vercetti's shirt is darker but also the Lamborghini next to him, the Infamous. It's a completely different model to what we get in the final game. This is the model that we're used to seeing in Vice City and now let's compare it to the one that we got in this beta mod which now reinstates all of the content that's been removed from the game and as you can see this version of the Infamous is a lot closer to its real life counterpart. And something else you'll notice which you probably noticed earlier in the video is that the heads up display and the icons in the top right of the screen are completely different colours as well. Now this is actually the colour scheme for an extremely early version of Vice City where as you can see the colour palette is completely different. But one thing I do like about this beta version is how some of the weapon icons are a lot more contrast and saturated than what we got in the final game. Something else kind of minor but also quite interesting is how Ken Rosenberg's office has moved location from the beta version. You see, the original location of Ken's office was actually just around the corner of the hotel that we stay in at the start of the game. Speaking of which, by the way, the front doors to the hotel have also changed, where in the beta version you can see that they look a little bit more ugly than the final version. Anyway, that's everything that I thought you guys would actually want to see from this beta version of Vice City and everything removed from the game. If this video performs well and you guys enjoy it, I might do one of these for GTA San Andreas in the future, so make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe if you're excited to see that. Adios.